your lock was corroded? Frozen. Oh. You know, and, and yeah, is it still frozen? Have you had freezing oh, temperatures up here? Huh? Have you had freezing temperatures up here this year? 25 last night. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. I mean, I knew it felt cool, but... Yeah. Wow. No, it hasn't got that cold in Seattle yet. This house is... You know, it's probably here. Hold these houses about 35, 36. There is a big Elata that I use in breathing right now. That one's Dark Streak. That was Dark Streak. And, uh... It's really clumpy, and the pictures stand up really nice. Yeah, seems sturdy. Yeah. yeah I'm liking that kind of thing. Now, here we have species collection. We have a lot of them. We have rubus. We have miners and minor giants. And here we have leucophilus in pretty much all their forms. Here we have mixed flavus and leucophilus. And here, mostly flavus, and they're kind of segregated by the different tribes. Flavus, we have Rugelis, which have the red throat. We have Ornatus, which have the strong markings, the yellow with um, stronger red or dark mark, uh, parallel stripes on them, which can be either more or less marked. And some of them are just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, unfortunately, these, these, these are, are all no, these they're are all gone dormant. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have rubicaporis, which are basically red with a yellow top, and we have atropaporias, which are pure red. And this one looks like it has a yellow and, throat to yes. it. And maxima, which is pure yellow. And these forms are geographical to That's some nice. extent. That is, the southern plants tend, we got the Rubicaporas, we have the Atropaporias, and we have some Atropaporias. Oh, there's so many different kinds. One of them. those ones that are hooded over all the way with, is that a larger version? No, these right here, right here. Oh, that's, that's the Cobra Lily. That's the Antonia. Yeah? That has a very similar trapping effect. To so that little short one you were showing me. No, I was thinking to the minor, which oh, oh, all right. like this. This will not cross with Saracenias, although it's in the Saracenia It has some foliage, it's so like a leaf coming out from the, coming down from that. That's interesting. That's where you get the cobra thing. Yeah. The teeth. But insects land on here. We're going to have to sacrifice one of these. So we can get a good look at it. I've never seen anything like that before. See, once again, yeah, yeah. they land on here, they kind of crawl up in here, and then you can see it's like a stained glass window. Yeah, it's translucent. So the And so it's dark here, so they try to fly out here. Just well, like they, in a the house, minor. they go toward the window, and, and they, they end up right in the window. Down. Yes, it's a one-way dead end. Yeah. yeah. I think that's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. That's really cool. Like these these, these leaves hanging down. I wonder yeah. what that's like all up. Is that like a place for them to land or something? Yes, that's what we think. Yeah. Yeah. All right, these got some yellow on them. Here. They do. But this, I think, is an artifact of the season. Oh, so it's these like... These late pictures. So it's on its way out. The colors on very late pictures can be different. So these were just green, right? That's you that's serious and the max or flava maxima. Pure green. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to see these earlier in the year. The flavas tend to peak in June where and their hybrids tend to peak early where the white hybrids from Luco tend to peak late. And here we have Oreophila, which is a Cites plant. Only a, a very few remnant populations. Oh, in the wild? There's not in many the of wild, them? Yeah. 
Exactly. I grow a lot of these from seed. These are nests very early. It's a plant that comes up very early and shuts down very early because of habitat. Yeah. And um, one really nice thing about Oreophila is it clusters like crazy. It makes big clumps, so it makes a big bouquet when they come up. Another thing is, it's the only species that really flowers at the same time as the pictures come up. So you can see the whole thing at one time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And here we have the perks in all their different forms. We've got roseas, which are the southern forms that have the pale pink flower, probably the be most beautiful flower in the genus. We have the AF form of rosea, the anthocyanin free form. And then we have anthocyanin free form of purpurea purpurea, which is the northern one. Uh, so, uh, what's that, what is that term, anthocyanin? It means they don't have the red and yellow, or the red pigments. Right. They can't make them. And then, for something somewhat different, there's the veinless ones. Like most purpurea are strongly veined, strongly colored, got some kind of markings in them. Yeah, yeah. These do not. Oh. Huh. This is entirely separate, in my opinion, from the genetics of the heterophylla or AF. Because when I cross an AF plant with a veinless bud, I get normal colored plants. Whatever that is, they're covering for one another and get the normal colors. Yeah. Because otherwise, if I cross within this or within that, they'll all either be F or baneless because it's recessive. And we cross it, there's nothing else in it, but we cross those two different things together. Something entirely different. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm pursuing that one. I have seeds to plant this year that came from um, a couple of sibling plants from that first cross. I'd be very interested to see how the genetic just smeared across the outcome. Well, and you're sort of unraveling it. You're going to learn which I traits know. are dominant and recessive, and then you start yeah. to make predictions about what's going to come out. Yeah, of course. <laughs> these are very simple things where one, only one gene is involved. You get into the rest of it, and the complexity increases yeah. so much. This very difficult to figure that out. Inheritance of color in Saracenias in general is still pretty mysterious to me. Do you think anybody's doing, um, now that it's become much easier to do, mm -hmm. uh, do you think anyone, someone must be doing a DNA analysis on these things to try and get I some... I think they've done some. Yeah. I'm probably not the best one to ask about that. I know people that might know the answer to that better than I do. Because my friend who's the arachnid biologist, they were doing DNA sampling right in her lab, yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. It's not that complicated to do anymore. Not anymore. But then you still have to take that genetic information and sort of get an idea which mm -hmm. genes are doing what and work it all out. But Well, yes. And I know that the breeding I'm doing is very old-fashioned thing. You know, yeah. This is a basic thing that we started out with 10,000 years ago. Yeah. I expect that in the future they could probably do a much better job even as a junior high school science fair project by di di directly manipulating the game. In the meantime, I think there's something to be said for the art of it. Yes. The art form of it. I have to think so. Yeah. <laughs> because when it comes right down to it, there's a whole bunch of love has gone into this. Yes. But Which is not to say that if you weren't doing, if you're doing it scientifically, it wouldn't there wouldn't be any love involved, but no, still. No, it's a different kind of love. Yeah. <laughs> I, Investment I of time and energy and attention and thought and all that. I'm not rigorous enough to do much science. You know, the simple stuff, you know, I play around with stuff that's interesting to me. And I don't have time to pursue it in depth. Steve Gallick has the largest flava collection in the country, and that's only about seven miles from here. Oh, wow. And he is doing science on it, because that's his bent. Yeah. And he will find out, through the first one, 
to nail down the heritage of color of the province because that's pretty much what it's working. Yeah. <laughs> These are Cetacena hybrids here. And the Cetacena is that fish wear trap thing? Yes. And most people have stopped with the first generation plus, like 40i times Cetacena. I like these plants. A lot of people don't. It's non-functional traps, and they look kind of weird. No, wait, what do you mean they're non-functional? Oh, because of the hybrids, they they can't yes. get water in them. Well, it's neither a fish weird trap, nor is it an effective trap in other respects. We have two di different species that have entirely different trapping mechanisms. That doesn't really bother me. They grow fine. Yeah. They grow slow. They hang on to the pitchers a long time. You can keep them in a pot for a long time, just getting bigger and bigger each year without running all over the place. And and the 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 plant doesn't necessarily have to trap insects in order to thrive. It does not. We have fertilizer in the water here. Yeah. And the lack of fertilizer, it would have trouble without the insects. They would persist for a long time. Yeah. But they wouldn't grow much. Wouldn't really thrive. And then when we take that cordii and cross it with the leucophila, they all open up. Yeah, yeah. And now we're getting a pretty plant. I can see that pattern now. You're yes. talking about the leucophilum and stuff. It's starting to make sense yes. to me. Well, that's really and triangular. The, and it's still got a quarter citizena, a quarter purpurea, and half leucophilum. But now that citizena look has become subtle. What it still contributes is a very strong stem, leaf stem, and the ability to hang on to other traps a little. Yeah. And then we have more of them. Yeah, those are nice looking. Yeah, I think so. If we use, say, another plant into the cordii, then we can get these darker, very interesting colors. It's kind of golden or kind of yeah. yellow markings on them. And that opens the trap up further, too, so you can see into it easily. And once again, we have these really stiff, so, so it won't Yeah, color. yeah. And um, here we have the yellow hybrids and the red hybrids, mostly. And in that bed we skipped there, those are the minor giant hybrids. This is interesting. And is this color altered because it's on its way out, or? This is just an amazing plant. That's but that's my, a beautiful my thing. Kenji did this one. Yeah. He did this too. I don't have one of the parents on this cross. I'm going to name this one for him. Yeah, yeah, that's a good I idea. To see that. I like this a lot. It's really striking. Yeah. That's a great plant. Contrasts are good. Yeah, it's got these real angular yeah. wood. I mean, that's just grody. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. And then there's the dark Trying to get plants as dark as possible. I think I'm going to name the tall black one Anibus if somebody doesn't get there before. <laughs> And I suppose it's just like in a in a bog uh, garden display, the you know dark color ones show the light color ones off, and they contrast each other. And yeah, I think so people haven't seen them much. They went crazy for them in San Francisco at, when the girls took them down. They're yeah. And it's like a, in a pond, like you have a koi pond, right? Yeah. And you, you know, there's a principle that you put like a really dark fish in there, yes. like a, a black koi, a really plain one, yes. because it makes the other ones yes. just stand out as a contrast to the eye. These are white hybrids. I'm trying to get more short whites and pinks. And there's a lot of white on these. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Boy, that that um, hood, that sort of ruffly. Yes, that's unusual. That's amazing. 
And is this a is this a hybrid that you made or? Hell yeah. Oh. That's spectacular. I mean, I don't know shit about them, and I'm this still is crazy quilt times windermill. Crazy quilt. <laughs> yeah. And this is um, this is an outlet. I don't have anything else that really looks like. This. No, I haven't seen anything like that. To work on that one. Here's my largest set of Santa. Here's set of Santa. These are Purpuria hybrids. Save with Oreophila, Slava, not Leucophila. Those are in a different area. And this one's got kind of an interesting habit, too. Yeah, see the hoods kind of. Yeah, those are nice. Yeah, these are past. These are long past. And then we have Wow, look at that. <coughs> That's almost yes. fluorescent. I think that may be Dana's light. Let me look here, which is one of the best plants in tissue from tissue culture. Yes, it is. <coughs> this is a, a plant we got from tissue culture. Dana's light, a name for name color. And I think it was a wild collected plant, but I'm not sure. Really? This was a wild plant? Well, it looks an awful lot like a pink leucophilus. Wow. I think basically it is a pink leucophilus. Wow. <clears throat> That's intense. And it's a useful parent in breeding. And oh, I yeah. It a lot. <clears throat> yep. Fancy, fancy. <clears throat> now, these are AF recessives, and those are AF pure. So, if I cross two of these together, any two of these, I'm going to get a quarter AF. If I cross a recessive AF with a pure AF, I'm going to get half and half. Yeah. And when I cross any of these together, I'll get 100% AF. That's pretty simple to manage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wanting to create a whole range of shapes in a very strong green and white contrast. I'm I'm early in this yet. I'm still early in this game with these things. But um, I think I can get some good shit out of it. Yeah. And then these are mostly Moriais, which are primary leucophila flava hybrids. So we also got some Lucifila times Oreophila and times Alada and maybe times Gulfensis. A little bit Gulfensis. Some of these are still showing some decent color, but mostly they're... Enough that I can get a sense of what they're yeah. supposed to look like. This is... This is a cross I made myself from a Flava and a Lucal. So that's a primary Morii, first generation Morii. And this is a nice looking Kindle, one. Which is a wild plant. It comes from Wilkerson Bog again. Neil Wilkerson's Bog. It's named for her. It doesn't make a hell of a lot of tracks. Otherwise, it's a wonderful plant. Yeah. And if you could see it at peak, you could see that. Right now, it's tired. Yeah. Then we have a bunch of random stuff. This is a complicated hybrid. This one is named for Simone. Oh. <laughs> and this is a Luku times perp times a lot of red black. And you can see that the red under the hood from a lot of has come through very strongly in this plant. Oh, yeah. And that seems to be sometimes dominant and maybe sometimes not so. It looks like there's complications there, but I really like bringing that red under the hood from a lot of into more open hybrids. This one's really strongly red. Mm -hmm. Nice looking plant. Yeah, see, it's keeping its traps loose. It's going to be useful and ready. Complicated hybrid. Yeah. 
but potentially valuable for uh, valuable for hanging on to the traps late. A lot of that has to do with how late the last group of traps came up. Because the later they come up, the longer they're going to last. Especially then since temperatures are falling and they hang on.